Hey guys, in this week's video, I'm actually gonna to start to uh, tear into the CB550. So, um, main things I wanna get done this week are try to get it started. So, I have everything I need to do to um, do an oil change on it. I'm gonna to try to charge up the battery. Hopefully the battery's good enough to uh, hold the charge to try to get it started. Uh, then I'm gonna look into wiring as well to see what I need to uh, get together to kind of hot wire it. Uh, since most of you know what's inside of the headlight is kind of taken apart so um, yeah right now I'm just gonna hook up the exhaust and you know, start to kind of tinker around so we'll take you along the way Uh, part of the bike torn down pull the tank off I got the exhaust put on the well, awesome thing about this bike is the dude was like planning on doing a really I guess high-end build on it not that I'm not but you know he was going all like OE parts so I got like brand new in the bag Honda OEM like the copper exhaust gaskets everything brand new bolt Honda bolts everything was you know kind of OEM so and this is a Mac four into one header as well I have a muffler to put on it because um, it kind of just you know comes down here and ends right there I have this stainless muffler to put on it I haven't exactly figured out how that's gonna how it's gonna happen yet I don't know if I'm just gonna be able to like clamp it because this is quite a bit bigger than that to, I don't know, we'll figure that out later, but got uh, the back taken out. The battery is completely shot, but it's a big stock size battery anyway, so I'm not gonna end up using it. I'll probably go with the same battery I went with on my last CB550. It was, uh, like I said, a little bit on the small side. If you guys see my like comments about people asking about it, but I never had a problem with that, having enough juice to start the bike or you know, I even let the bike sit for a few weeks and then it would still fire right up. So I never had any issues out of that battery. So I don't really have any hesitation on using it again. And it was cheap. It was like $28 on Amazon. It's a solid or a gel cell battery, I think it was. So it doesn't have the fluid in it and stuff. So you could actually even mount it like sideways or however you want. Um, and I'm probably going to build a very similar battery box in this bike. For the Triumph, I think I'm going to go with an anti-gravity battery uh, just because I really want to try to hide that battery. And the anti-gravities are really nice and really small, but they are uh, expensive. So we'll, uh, we'll probably go with anti-gravity on the Triumph just because, yeah, like that space is really going to be at a premium because I don't want a big, ugly battery box. You know, I want that bike to be as clean as possible. So I'll probably do that. I need to look up if there's any issues with running an anti-gravity on a Triumph. I know the wiring is weird. I haven't really looked much into it, but I know they're like, it's like positive earth or something like that they call it. I don't know. I think it's a little bit backwards from kind of normal bike wiring. So got to look up and see if there's going to be any issues with running a, a lithium battery on a Triumph. I don't think there will be, but I don't know. Time will tell on that one. But so yeah, it looks like a pretty standard setup on here. I think this may be a more modern regulator and rectifier. I don't know, I have to kind of dig in there. It doesn't look like the factory one to me. So that'd be cool. Everything else is pretty much standard, star, starter solenoid, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, at this point, I think what I'm gonna do is probably do the oil change. Which if you haven't done one on these bikes, it's super easy. This is the filter I always get. It's a KNN, let's see, KN-401. And then I'm going with Castrol uh, 1040 motorcycle oil. Takes a little over three quarts. I like to put in three and then um, run the bike, let it warm up and then check it just because I don't want to overfill it. Uh, but yeah. The oil change, I won't do like a you know walk through how to because it is so simple, but this is the uh, 
little where the oil filter is right here and then the drain plug is is right underneath and what I didn't look at is if this exhaust is going to be in the way no it won't uh, no it shouldn't might put up a little splash shield uh, just so it doesn't splash directly on the exhaust but yep so that's what I'm gonna do right now is just a drain I don't think there's much oil in there drain that out swap the filter fill it up uh, then we will move on to the next step We got uh, three quarts in here. Like I mentioned earlier, I use the um, Castrol 1040 motorcycle oil. 1040 is good for pretty much all temperature ranges. Um, so that's typically what I stick with here. Um, I don't really have any brand loyalty to Castrol. It's just kind of what I've always used. So like I said, I put three quarts in. The book does call for 3.2, but there's gonna be some residual oil left in the bike. Uh, you know from the last oil or whatever you're not gonna be able to get hundred percent out so I normally just throw three quarts in and then once I run the bike for a little bit you know check it periodically and make sure it doesn't drop low and you can always add more later but I'd rather it be a little bit low and add some uh, than have to uh, you know worry about it being overfilled so that's gonna probably do it for now um, I'm gonna come back out here tomorrow and look at the carbs. I'm not sure what I'm gonna have to do to them. They, I may not have to do anything. I know the bike's been sitting a good while. I believe the guy said it was earlier this year or maybe late last year, the last time it ran. So I don't know how gummed up everything is in there. Uh, worst case scenario, I can pull them all off, pull the bowls off, spray them all out with carb cleaner, um, you know, and get them all nice and clean. It may be worth just doing that anyway. And then I can check what main jets are in there um, so that's probably what I'll end up doing is pulling those carbs off tomorrow. Then we will figure out what little hot wiring I may need to do uh, in order to get the bike to a point to where it will run. And then we'll give it a shot. So tomorrow should be the day. Uh, later, just later in this video for you guys, but for me, tomorrow should be the day we uh, hear this baby run for the first time. So. Hey guys, it's the next day. I uh, threw the battery from the Triumph uh, in here because it's still good. And then most of the wiring is still hooked up, so I'm pretty sure we can start it. I'm relatively confident. Uh, I haven't checked if it's getting spark yet, but I figure the best way to check if it's getting spark is to try and start it. Um, if that doesn't work, then of course we'll pull a plug and, and go that route. But as of right now, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do the background noise again. I'm going to go ahead and see if we can't fire it up.
good enough for me. Super awesome, guys. I'm, uh, I'm really stoked. I mean, that fired up super easy. I mean, with a half-dead battery and, you know, makeshift wiring back together and just spraying starter fluid in there, that's freaking awesome that it even ran that much. So I'm really, really excited about it. So basically the next steps now are going to be to start tearing it apart. I'm going to order the parts. I'm about to pull the carbs off just to give them a nice, good clean. Uh, make sure everything's good in there. And then, um, yeah, I mean, now that we know it runs, we can kind of get on to the, uh, the bigger, more, you know, technical chopping of things and, and redoing it. So I'm, I'm super excited, super pumped that that, uh, that fired up. So. Sweet. Let's keep going. The carbs off real quick, including this <laughs> monstrosity of a fuel line. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six hoses. Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hose clamps, two zip ties, and two T fittings. All <laughs> for a, a set of uh, fuel lines. So, needless to say, I will be uh, redoing and, and not using any of that. Um, the carbs are a little rusty on the top, but overall they seem to function pretty well. So I'm going to pull all the bowls off, pull all the jets out, um, kind of spray it all down, spray through all the passageways and everything with, uh, you know, an aerosol uh, carb cleaner. And then, um, yeah, we should be good to go in there too. I'm going to check the jet size. Um, my last bike I ran a 110 jet, I believe, with pod filters, so I'm assuming these are going to be very similar because uh, the guy that I bought it from said they had already been rejetted for the pod filters. So, yeah, that's the plan. I'm going to go ahead and pull all of these bowls off and uh, see how bad it looks on the inside. guys I got the uh, carbs all cleaned out they were super clean already I'm thinking that there actually hasn't been gas run through these carbs since they were rebuilt um, by the last guy that had them or actually the company he sent it to they do have 110 main jets in them already uh, which like I said earlier is exactly what I would put in to run on pod filters uh, so we're good to go there so I put them right back on and it uh, should be good so um, just for good measure, I'm going to try to fire it back up and see if we can't uh, get it to run for at least a little bit by spraying some uh, some starter fluid in there. I would try to get the gas hooked up, but I showed you what the inside of the gas tank looks like, and uh, it's disgusting. So without trying to hook up another different gas tank, I need to get myself a little auxiliary gas tank for stuff like this, but uh, we're just going to try it on the starting fluid again for now. I think that's probably good for all well, my neighbors get a little bit too aggravated because like I said it doesn't have a uh, a muffler on it so it's obviously extremely loud so good to go mm. 